The next topic is Rashis and Nakshatras. Remember, the Grahas are the first pillar of astrology, and the Rashis and Nakshatras are the second pillar. So let's look at them. Here's a chart. This chart assumes that we are standing on the equator. Okay, and if we look to the east, we see it happens to be the um, uh, vernal equinox, and it's midnight, and we just see uh, the first Rashi, Mesha, or Aries, rising over the horizon. Similarly, if we look in the west, we see uh, the uh, constellation Tula, or Libra, is just setting. Okay, and here's the pole star right on the horizon in the north. Why? Because we're standing on the equator, right? Okay. So we need to understand how physically the different signs are situated in the sky. If the first degree of Mesha is rising, then also the first degree of the Ashvini Nakshatra is rising. You see, the Rashis, the 12 Rashis, and the 27 Nakshatras are both fixed stars. In other words, they're always in the same position in relation to each other. Ashwini Nakshatra is always next to Mesha, Rashi. Huh? And Bharani Nakshatra is always next to Mesha, uh, Rashi, and so on. The signs and the Nakshatras are in a fixed relationship with each other. Why do you say ascending if it's going below the horizon? Because it's coming up. It's in the east. The stars are moving this way. Oh, okay. Huh? The east is always rising. The west is always setting. So we call it the ascendant and the descendant. Okay. Right now, the way this chart is set up, Mesha Rashi and Ashwini Nakshatra are rising or ascending. That's the ascendant. And the descendant is Tula Rashi and Chitra Nakshatra. Let's give another picture of, just to, just to make this really clear. <laughs> okay, here's the earth in the middle. And so the extension of the earth's equator is out here. This is the celestial equator. See, here's the label down here, celestial equator. Huh? And here's the, uh, where is the ecliptic label? Oh, there it is. Ecliptic is labeled here. Huh? And then the sun is going around every year. It takes one year. The sun takes one year to move around the ecliptic from our point of view. And so because the ecliptic is inclined by 23 and a half degrees, there's a 23 and a half degree difference in latitude between the summer solstice and the celestial equator. Similarly, between the winter solstice and the celestial equator is 23 and a half degrees. 23 and a half degrees, 23 and a half degrees. What's the difference between the celestial equator and the ecliptic? 23 and a half degrees. 23 and a half degrees, right. Okay, so as the earth is turning from towards the east, huh, the constellations on the eastern horizon appear to be rising, and the constellations on the western horizon appear to be setting. Okay, actually, they're staying still in the sky, and the Earth is rotating underneath them. But 
the illusion that we have from the point of view of the earth. Remember, Vedic astrology is an earth-centered system, geocentric system. From the point of view of the earth, it appears that the stars are moving once around every 24 hours in this direction. So let's go over the Rashis and Nakshatras. The Rashis are Mesha or Aries, Brishaba or Taurus, Mituna or Gemini, Karkata or Cancer, Singha or Leo, my favorite, <laughs> Kanya or Virgo, Tula or Libra, Brishika or Scorpio, Dhanahu or Bo. I mean, um, <laughs> that's what it means in Sanskrit. <laughs> Sagittarius, right. <laughs> Makara, Makara is Capricorn. Kumbha, yeah, Kumbha. Kumbha means a man carrying water. Yeah, Kumbha or Aquarius, and Mina, or Pisces. Mina means fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are the 12 Rashis, or signs of the zodiac. And then the 27 nakshatras are Ashvini, Bharani, Kritika, Rohini, Mrigashirsha, sorry. Ardra, Purnavasu, Pushya, Ashlesha, Magha, Purva Falguni, Uttara Falguni, Hasta, Chitra, Svati, Vishaka, Anuradha, Jeshta, Mula, Purva Shadha, Uttara Shadha, Shravana, we should all know that one, Shravana Kirtanam Vishnu, Dhanishta, Shatabhisha, Purva Bhadra, Uttara Bhadra, and Revati. Why do we go around clockwise when actually in, when we see in the sky every day, the st these ap appear to be moving counterclockwise? Huh? Because even though they move counterclockwise in the sky every day according to the Earth's rotation, the planets move clockwise around this circle. And we will keep these directions, They're, they'll help us uh, visualize the movements of the stars and planets uh, when we get into the actual chart. So let's take a look at some of the attributes of the, plan, of the signs, the Rashis, 12 Rashis. Mesha means a ram. Vrishabha means a bull. What's a ram? A ram? It's like a really big goat with big horns, yeah. Mituna means an embracing couple. Now, in the West, they call it Gemini, the twins, but it's not really twins. <laughs> it's a couple, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because uh, people born in Mituna are very sexually inclined. That's just the way it is, folks. I didn't make this up. Karkata, Karkata. Huh? Lab, uh, sorry, uh, palatal key, palatal key, just like most Indians are already talking like that. Okay, Karkata is the crab. Singha means lion, which is very similar to our Leo. Kanya means virgin, just like uh, Kanya Kumari huh? means a teenage virgin. And Tula, means scales, just, uh, just like Libra, the symbol is the scales. 
Vrishika means scorpion, uh, same as our Scorpio. Dhanuhu means bow. Yeah, bow. Uh, Sagittarius means the, the symbol that's used is usually the, uh, um, the mythological half man, half horse with a bow, which is an incarnation of Vishnu named Prishnagarbha. Yeah, yeah. We're going to get into it. All these are symbols of different incarnations of Vishnu.